Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we're bringing you a review. This one is for Topiaria from Renegade Games. It is a two to four player game that literally takes about 15 minutes to play. Yeah, this is a short game. You're not really placing tiles. There's tiles out on the board and you're kind of swapping them in and out and trying to sequence things. Kind of a puzzle going on for sure. Absolutely. So this is a topiary garden. And within this garden, you're going to have a five by five grid, no matter the number of players that are participating. However, the number of visitors that each player will start with, which are your meeples, will change depending if you have a two, three, or four player game. In a four player game that we already have in progress, each player is going to have five visitors. And the whole idea here is that you're going to be placing your visitors on the outskirts of this topiary garden, trying to sequence tiles to get victory points. Yeah, you want your visitors to have the best view, if you will, thematically here. So you're going to be sequencing these things so that they see the small ones in front of them and so on and so forth. You don't want to be standing in a topiary garden and have the biggest tree right in front of you. Exactly. So the way the game starts is you're going to lay out uh, a five by five grid with all of them face down with the only one visible in the center. You're going to flip that one face up and then each player is going to be dealt with the residual tiles that are left over three tiles each. These tiles range from values of one through five, and there's eight different types of topiaries in there. So you have 40 different unique tiles within the game. Once each player has three of these tiles, you can immediately start playing or you can do a draft. It depends on how right. much luck you want in your initial game. At the very start, you're gonna have three random tiles. However, you can introduce a draft. With the leftover three tiles, the player who is going last in turn order will include these three plus their original three and just pick three that they wish. And you're gonna go counterclockwise around until each player has a choice of tiles that they wanna start with. And that's extremely important because not only is the placement of the numeric values important, but also the type of topiaries that you're scoring is important for bonus points. Right, the scoring is really where the meat of this game ends up happening because the turn structure, what you do on your turn after you've drafted or just taken them randomly, you're simply going to do one thing for sure yep. and optionally another. Right. The thing that you have to do is take one of your visitors and like Jeremy said, place them somewhere around the outside of the garden. Now, here's where they can be. You can place them orthogonally adjacent to any of these tiles, but you can also place them on the corners looking down basically the diagonals. And that's not just on the extreme corners, but even in the middle of this grid here. So you can look down these angles. And like we said, you're basically trying to set yourself up to look down a row uh, or a diagonal row, whatever, of, of trees that, right. that go up in order and hopefully have the same kind. Right. Now, one of the rules when you place these is that you are not allowed to place in a sight line where someone else has already placed. So if I place my blue guy along this sight line, in a future turn, a player cannot place directly adjacent to, to them or across from them. And that includes the corners or orthogonal sides. Right, so the garden starts to get very crowded pretty quickly. Yep. But the optional thing that you can do on your turn, and when we've played, I don't know that anyone skipped this step, Right. but the optional thing is you're going to take a tile from the garden yep. and then replace it with one of the three tiles that you have. Or the tile that you picked up itself. Yeah, you can use that tile as well. So basically you're increasing your hand size limit momentarily to four, right. and then choosing one of those and replacing the tile that you took. So how that works is if I place my guy and it's my turn, I can place him along this sight line because there's no one else across the sight line. And then the only place I can pick up a tile is the place where you have placed your visitor. Yeah, the sight line. So it can only be in the sight line. I can pick any one of these to pick up. I could pick up this one and I can look at all of my different tiles in my hand and then put one back in. Sometimes you may not want to do that because doing so leaves a good sight line for what you have and you may only have a higher number which could block some of the lower numbers in the future. You're literally going to do this around the table until everyone has placed all of their visitors one at a time. And then you're going to score points. Yeah, the scoring is where it gets a little interesting. First of all, you're going to get points for any tile, any type of tree, no matter what kind of variety you have. But you're also going to get bonus points if you have the same type. A little bit, one point per if you have for each tile of the same type in your sight line. So if this is how the game would end and all of our, say for instance, all of our visitors were on the board, I would look at my blues. I would look at all my blues on the table and score them individually using the scoring pad over here. So I would score one, two points, four points, and five points. That's because they go in numerical order from low to high. Now, say for instance, I had a, another two here. 
This two is going to block this two because they're the same height. So I wouldn't score both of these twos, just one of them. And as long as you can see a numerical value that increases, you're going to score all those points. So in this case, I'd score one point plus another two points plus five points, skipping over this two. Exactly. Now, you might be thinking, boy, there's some opportunity here to really mess with your opponents. Absolutely. And oh boy, is there. Yeah. Uh, for, a, for a game that's about sort of the serene act of visiting a garden, this game has a fair amount of nastiness in terms of where you're placing tiles because if you've left yourself open where I've put myself down a sight line here someone could take this tile and put a giant five there now here's the news I'm going to get five points from it but I might they may have screwed up this entire row for me which would have scored me a lot more yep you're also going to score for the same types of topiaries in that sight line so for instance any of the ones that will score will score multiple points if they are the same type. Let me go back to my original example because this one makes sense. Here, I've got a natural order of numbers. None of these block any other ones, and I have one, two, three whales. So I'm gonna score an additional three points right. because I have three like types in there. The last thing you're gonna score points for, which is the uh, not the most obvious thing to do, but you're gonna look through all of your remaining tiles, and you're going to look at the numeric value. As long as these numbers are smaller than things in your garden that have scored points that round, you're going to score points for them as well. So I know that sounds weird, but say this was a two whale and I have a four and a five whale that scored for me. This would also score two points if it was a two whale. Right. It really comes down to the types of topiary in that case. You're yep. looking for what you scored and if you have some low values in your hand still, that are lower than the ones you scored, you get those points as well. I know that sounds really convoluted the way we explain the scoring, but it's really simple. This game plays extremely yeah. fast. It is literally 15 minutes. That's probably including setup because you're just simply placing a visitor, maybe taking a tile and putting a new tile in and you just go around the table until the topiary garden is completely built. Yeah, it's a super fast game. And like we said, the scoring is not as complicated once you've played it. But with that said, I would say that it's probably the most complicated part of the game yeah. is really understanding the, the scoring because playing the game is incredibly simple. And as you said, this game is uh, very mean. Like, we did not expect <laughs> this game deceptively mean to a point because when you place these tiles, you're going to be looking at what other people will be scoring. And you are purposefully many times going to use tiles to block them from scoring a major amount of points. Yeah, there's a lot of times where you don't really have tiles in your hand that allow you to do anything specifically beneficial for you mm -hmm. on a turn. So your mind immediately goes to, okay, well, what's he trying to do? Yep. And you can, there was a couple of times where we were playing this game, and like Jeremy said, we thought, oh, this looks friendly enough. Yeah. It's a nice family ish looking sort of game. And uh, it is and, for the most part. And it still is for yeah. sure. But as we played it, someone exclaimed, this is pretty mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if you like to be a little bit competitive, it definitely has that and will tickle that itch for sure. Yeah, so this is Topiary from Renegade Games. Plays two to four players in about 15 minutes. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the game, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, everything else that we do, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Season 2 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored in part by Cool Stuff Inc. Cool Stuff in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.